It is absolutely freezing out here. It just stopped raining and it was snowing yesterday. There's a little bit there. It's still snowing up in the mountains. It's like 40 something or 30 something degrees outside. The sun's about to go down. But I figured now would be a good time to start working on my new heater installation. Since I don't have any kind of AC inside my truck. I got all these tools in the back. But since I don't have any kind of heat inside my truck whenever I'm driving or if I'm going off road, it's really, really cold. Typically I have stuff from Meridine High Performance Fans, but this one's actually from Meridine Marine. Same company, just a different division. Basically these guys specialize in marine applications like for boats. So this would go inside like a stairwell or something like that on your boat inside the cabin where you can go ahead and heat up the inside of a boat. I'm gonna retrofit this to work with my truck. So I'm gonna be showing you guys how to take care of that. The kit that I ordered, I have in the link in the description below, but it basically comes with everything that you need. The fan itself actually has its own harness and pigtails. Then it has a universal pigtail for it. Then the instruction sheet for it is right here. It's about four pages. And you have a template for cutting into your boat. But we're not going to be using this one since, like I said, we're not going to be installing this on a boat. We're going to install this in a truck. It also came with the brackets. So that way they mount up on the side here. And then it comes with the switch and a little trim bezel for it. So you can go ahead and mount it on the dash or wherever you want. A little pocket full of screws. Let's go ahead and bring this inside the cab and see where we're gonna mount it. All right, so this is the vent for the inside of the cabin. This is where the fresh air actually comes in. You guys can see I have like a bunch of wires right here. I'm gonna have to cut the clips and then move them out of the way to make room. But one thing I wanna show you guys is that this heater is not an electric heater. I did not want an electric heater because I'm only running a single battery, single alternator deal right now. The fan is already gonna take up some amps and if it's gotta power a heating element, it's just asking for trouble, especially if I'm out in the middle of nowhere off-roading. This was a show car or something that I didn't have to drive a lot. I would actually opt for the electric heater because the extra plumbing is kind of a hassle. What I mean by that is that you actually have two of these little fittings on the back of the heater and this is actually for engine coolant. So you have to have a thermostat to get that engine coolant up to 190 degrees degrees or whatever your thermostat is set to after you have that the water will go through this heater it'll heat up the heating element here and then it'll exit the other way typically you're going to want to install a valve that valve would allow you to shut off and on the water going through the heater so in the middle of summer you don't really want heat to radiate inside of your cabin so you go ahead and shut that off and the water flow will stop and then the heating element will not get warmed up and you'll be able to drive around fine you won't have a hot cabin because i'm in the middle of winter right now i'm going to go ahead and ignore the valve for right now and i'm going to go ahead and figure out where where this thing is going to get mounted to on the inside of the cabin. All right, so I went to the hardware store and I picked up a couple things that I'm going to need to finish this install. First, I picked up an assortment of different screws. This was like $3, $4. And then I picked up a Nutsert uh, rivet gun and it came with the Nutserts themselves. So I'm going to show you guys what those are for in a minute. But the reason I got the assortment is because I don't have the bolts or the screws that are supposed to go on the side of the housing. So I realized that they are quarter inch by 20. So as soon as we got four on this side, four on the other side, we can go ahead and start measuring this out. All right, so this is my game plan. I actually moved this over uh, to just a single hole and then I'm later gonna add a support to prevent the plastic trim from getting blown up. But instead of having it come down, and pointing at your feet and hiding this like I wanted to. And it actually would have looked pretty good. You wouldn't even be able to see it. But something that really concerns me is the fact that my windshield will get foggy, especially if I'm driving out in the snow. In order to remedy that, this dash actually has defrost vents on either side of the dash, but there are no actual tubes connecting to them. So what I'm actually gonna do, I'm gonna take this heater and I'm gonna flip it upside down. The vent is actually gonna be shooting up toward the windshield. And now when my heater turns on, it's gonna fill the dash with hot air. And the only way to get the hot air out because heat rises is through those vents. And hopefully, that will eliminate the problem with my fogging windshield. Will it actually work in reality? I don't know, but for right now, that's what we're gonna go with. If later on I realize that it's not working and I need to do something else, then I will take this back off, I will flip it upside down, and I will install it the way I wanted to install it originally, and then we'll figure out something else for the vents. All right, so these are gonna be our next steps. Since I already have the brackets where I want them, I went ahead and presented the heater up against the firewall. I marked out the bottom holes, and then I measured out center to center on these two holes that are right here.
here. And then I that measured out to two and a half inches. I then went to the marks that I put on the firewall and then I measured up two and a half inches. And now center to center, the hole should be where they're supposed to be. The next step now is to actually install the rib nuts. And basically these are like rivets, but they're thread inserts. These are aluminum. Things were going really well. You guys can see I have one, two, three inserts already good to go. And then below that I have an empty hole. And that's because when I use the drill bit, it fits pretty well, but not perfect. And I kind of drilled at an angle. So that made the hole a little bit elongated, just large enough. So that way the rib nut does not fit anymore. So the solution is to actually fit like a washer or a piece of sheet metal. Uh, on a new rivet to see if I can get that to, to close up but for right now there's nothing I can do so I'll go ahead and I'll fix that at a little later date. All right as you guys can see the heater is mounted up I've got two screws holding it that way and I've got the one screw holding it here but as you guys can see because we measured from center to center we actually have a little bit of slack so because I let the heater come down a little bit now I can make a new hole down here and then I can run a screw that way. But I'll save that for a later day because I do want to get rid of those Phillips head screws and install regular bolts. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the next step, which is the wiring and grounding of the motors. All right, so as for the wiring, this is what we're working with. We've got our switch. It's a three-position switch, low, medium, and high. We've got our knob. We've got our face plate. And then we have also have the actual wiring harness itself three wires because it's low, medium, and high. Like I mentioned before, the grounding of the motor is at the motor, so we don't have to have a ground wire on this harness. It came with a couple spade connectors and it came with a couple nuts. I'm not sure what the nuts are for, but it came with a couple of these nuts and then these nuts are actually to set up the spacing for your dash. I have an aluminum overlay plate on my dash, so the fact that I've got so much extra thread really helps a lot because I'll, I'll be able to drill a hole and set this inside without any issue. It came with this, which I have no idea what it's for. I'm assuming it's for like some sort of grounding or something. I'm not gonna worry about it right now. The back of the switch is clearly labeled low, medium, and high. Medium is the middle, high is on the right, low is on the left. And then there's a B, I don't know if you guys can see that, there's a B, that one's for battery power, which we're gonna pull off of a relay. And then after that, we've also got a C, and that C is actually not going to be used. I'm referencing the instructions that we looked at earlier and that tells you what the colors are so yellow is going to be low red is going to be medium orange is going to be high it says here that c is not used and b is battery power to a fuse but we're actually going to put this on a relay i don't want any of the amps that are going to be pulled by the heater to be run through my ignition switch and i also don't want the heater to be able to be turned on when the ignition switch is off so in order to alleviate that problem we're going to run a power wire from our ignition switch to a relay that relay is then going to jump direct battery power to the heater switch and then the heater switch is going Going to power the heater. I don't necessarily like the fact that we're running all the amps through the heater switch, but Meridine are the ones who designed the system. And if they say you can run this heater switch with their system, then it should have the right capacity for the heater motor that we're going to be installing. So this is where I'm going to be installing the switch. I wanted it a little bit closer to the ignition switch so I can reach it easier. But because of my aluminum overlay, you can't actually see it, but there's actually something behind the dash that won't allow the switch to sit flush. So I actually had to kick it over quite a bit in order to avoid that. I probably could have moved it over one inch, but I don't really want to risk it. So I'm going to install it right here. So the harness that comes with the heater is more than long enough for wherever I decide to put this on this dash. So I'm going to go ahead and install the switch first, and then we're going to see how the wires line up. All right, so I just finished installing the switch. And all three positions are free. I've also connected the wiring harness that goes to the motor. Now I'm going to go ahead and route the harness inside of my dash. Tie it into there, make it nice and neat. Hopefully I don't add to the bird's nest. And then once I get to the switch, I'm gonna trim off whatever's excess of these wires. Then we're gonna install the little spade connectors and then we're gonna hook them up to the back of here. Once we do that, I'm gonna grab another wire and that's gonna give us battery power. All right, so I've got everything installed. So let me show you guys how it works. I've got the off, the low, the medium, and the high. And let me tell you, I only drive around on low because it gets hot in here. I thought because I had the dent pointing up into the dash, I was going to have more of a problem getting airflow into the truck. But 
really that's not the case i haven't had a foggy windshield at all let's go ahead and jump on the engine bay side so i can show you what i've got so this stuff doesn't particularly pertain to only an ls as long as you have the two heater sides you're perfectly fine so on an ls you have a small side and a large side the small side is a 5 8 the large side is a three quarter inch those are coming out of the stock location with just a couple of hose clamps nothing special there then i have them running under the turbo dump and then they come up onto my firewall and i'll show you guys why i put them here in a second the only thing i need to do is fasten these up and move them off over to the side but for right now it works absolutely fine where it goes into the firewall you're going to notice that i have two bulkheads and these are actually an or jic fittings into a jic swivel that goes into a barb and then on one side i've got the 5 8 barb and on the other side i have the three quarter inch barb and the reason i did it like this is because the heater actually has a 5 8 inlet and outlet and so i decided to since the ls has one 5 8 and one three quarters at the bulkhead i would reduce that down at 5 8 so everything that goes inside the cab will be the standard 5 8 so let's go ahead and back inside Inside it does get a little messy and I'm gonna explain why. So I've got uh, two 45 degrees elbows coming out of the firewall and those go into a 5 8 barb on this side and 5 8 barb on that side. These two go into a 5 8 heater hose and the heater hoses go up into the heater right here and right here. So, so normally I wouldn't recommend you guys actually do it like this. It's a little bit more complicated than I would have wanted it to be. What I wanted to do was actually buy these 5 8 90 degree bends that you can buy from your local hardware store. And I would cut one slightly shorter than the other one. One would elbow here, one would elbow here, and they would go one on top of the other. And then my plan was to actually have the holes right here up one on top of the other. And that would make a nice clean installation. The second option was also to buy a couple of elbows and then take these hoses, put an elbow, two clamps there, two clamps there, in addition to the two clamps that I already have up on top. And that would just be way too many clamps. And the more clamps you have, the higher chance you have of leakage. So, But the main part is that it works absolutely fine. I still have to tuck these wires away, figure out a way to hide them, maybe put a cover on this or something. And then maybe I'll decide on the routing. The actual way that you route it isn't necessarily important unless it gets in the way of something else, which this will probably get in the way of, probably people's feet. But for the most part, if you want to move these up, you're more than welcome to do so. As for the inlet and outlet of the heater core itself, I didn't find any instructions on which one was which. I just plugged them up however I wanted to. I actually don't know which one is inlet and outlet coming out of the motor, and it doesn't really matter to me. So overall, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I've already had a couple days to use it, and I'm very happy with how warm it gets, and sometimes even too warm. So that's all good there. I will see you guys all in the next one. Night Wrencher out.